What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I have to do this, and this is pretty quick, because I just put out a video about Adrian Broner, Marcus Maidana, their purses, and I'm already getting feedbacks. I'm already getting people hit me up and saying, this is ridiculous, Ego. How is Broner getting this much? Broner's getting $1.25 million to fight a tune-up fight against Carlos Molina. Marcus Maidana is only getting $1.5 million to fight Floyd Mayweather. So the difference is competition. And Maidana is a champion where Broner just got his ass beat in his last fight. And they're like, this is ridiculous. This is insane. This is nuts. And they're getting mad at me and telling me I'm just delivering the information. Now, I got to do what I do best. And that's prove some of you motherfuckers wrong. And you can dislike the video. You can like it. Prove me wrong. The thing is, I'm going to give you guys on my channel, I try to give you guys a little bit more uh, boxing, sometimes a couple current events. And... What I'm going to talk about in this video is business in general. So the art of business, business 101. And this is not just as it pertains to boxing. This is life lessons. This is something you can incorporate into just your regular everyday life. Business. And some people are, like I said, you're boohooing because Marcos Maidana is getting $1.5 million and Broner's getting $1.25 million. First thing, they're both touching over a million, which is a lot of money. And I'm not justifying. I'm just telling you that's more money than... The average person is going to touch in their lifetime. So they're still getting a lot of money. Now, when you talk about fairness and is it injustice that Maidana is getting so close to what Broner's getting? Absolutely. I have no dispute with that. Maidana is a champion. He's fighting way tougher competition, yet he's getting close to what Broner's getting. Now I got to explore whether you like it or not. It's like the saying goes, when in Rome, do as Romans do. Now you have to conform. The difference being, Adrian Broner sells the fight. Now, I don't condone everything Broner does. Half the time he's obnoxious or over the top or I don't think he's a good rapper and he's, he's doing a lot of extra. But it worked for him. That's his niche. That's his shtick. People tune into him. People, when he has a video talking about he got crabs and STDs and shit on World Star, it has over a million views. People watch it and people like that have garnered fans for whatever reason. Now, I'm not saying everyone should be like Broner. Be yourself and do what works for you. He's just doing what works for him. So whether you like him or hate him, people talk about Broner. Same thing Floyd Mayweather. With Marcos Maidana, good fighter. I'm a huge Maidana fan. I've always told you that. But he doesn't really sell himself. He doesn't really sell the fight. Um, he doesn't necessarily make it interesting. He's kind of a country boy. And he let, he'd rather let his hands do the talking. So for that reason, that's one of the reasons he's not getting... The same purse because he hasn't branded himself he hasn't made himself he's just he's just too chill you know what i mean he hasn't really made made it interesting he hasn't really sold the fight he just rather sit back and let his fan his his hands do the talking and that's one aspect another thing people are complaining about um floyd mayweather has been on top undefeated 18 years so of course he's the a side and he looked good in his last fight against canelo he's getting 32 million i'm sure he can offer 24 million and give Mar Marcos Maidana 10 million. But at the end of the day, this is business. If you think about business, the number one priority for any business, whether it's hockey, boxing, McDonald's, Home Depot, Target, the number one priority is to make money, to become profitable. And that's the goal. And to thrive and do better. Like they compare your numbers from this year to last year, the fiscal year. And it's always to get better and to grow and grow your business. So, I mean, as far as my, like Mayweather, if he can get a fight with Maidana that people will tune in and get $32 million guaranteed from it, not including the pay-per-view revenues and stuff, and he's the A-side and he can dictate like that, um, so be it. Why would he not do that? Why is he going to just say, oh, it's like, let's say I have a MacBook Pro and I'm trying to sell my laptop on Craigslist. I say $1,000, but let's say I'm really desperate and I'm broke and I need the money. I say $1,000, someone sends me an email, says, yo, I'll get that off your hands right now for six fifty. dollars I got six fifty dollars cash for you. If I'm broke and I need the money, then I'm going to take the six fifty. dollars And are you going to be mad at the person because he got the laptop for an extreme deal because he got it for six fifty dollars when it's really a $1,000 computer? Or is it my fault because I need the money and I accepted that offer? That's really what Marcos Maidana did. Um, him and his team didn't have to accept the offer however they know they're not the a side of the equation and they know there's other options 
for Floyd Mayweather to fight. So they are willing to take $1.5 million for the opportunity, hope they pull off the upset, which will lead to future paydays. And it's their fault if they didn't want to negotiate. And this happens in business all the time. Here's an example. And that's another thing I do. When, I, when I'm proving you guys wrong, some of you guys are leaving these crazy comments, I give you examples. I support my claims. I can cite my sources, link interviews, articles, etc. So Curtis Stevens called out Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. They offered him something, HBO or, or whatever, uh, K2 Promotions, whatever. They offered Curtis Stevens an offer to fight Triple G. The guy he called out, he didn't like it. He was like, no, I got low bold. No, I don't want to do it and declined the offer. So they went back to the drawing board, proposed another offer. That second offer, Curtis Stevens was on board with. He said, OK, I'll fight Triple G for this X amount of money in HBO, um, televising it, blah, blah, blah. The fight was made. Same thing with Edwin Rodriguez and Andre Ward. Andre Ward was getting X amount of dollars. They offered an undefeated fighter at the time, Edwin Rodriguez, a certain offer. He was like, no, I'm not fighting the pound for pound number two guy for this amount of money. He renegotiated and got more money. And then the fight was made and he still got his ass beat. But those are two examples of boxing where the fighter didn't like it they offered a counter offer they weren't content with offer a so if marcos maidana and his team are willing to take 1.5 and it doesn't matter what broner's getting broner's his own fight on the same card but he's his own person if they were content with that then that's what it is you know what i mean and if you go to let's say a car dealership perfect example go to a car dealership and say you're looking at a honda you're looking at a honda civic 2013 model and the the regular price is 21,000 they're going to try as a business as a business the car dealership they're in it to make a profit they're going to try to sell that to you for 21,000 so if they say hey I can give you this Honda Civic I see you like it you like the color you like the features 21,000 and if I'm like yo sign me up and then we go and do the paperwork I got a car I'm paying 21,000 for it then next week, my friend goes to that same dealership, talks to the same guy, gets an almost identical Honda Civic, and he pays 16000 out the door for it. Am I going to be mad at the dealership or am I going to be mad at myself? It's not my problem or it's not the dealership's fault if I took the first offer and I was just content paying $21,000, whereas the next motherfucker, my friend, went in and got that same car, the same model and shit for sixteen. dollars because he was willing to walk or um, price match or whatever. He's like, oh, I can go to the dealership and get the same one for this dollar. And then they made him a deal. That's what my Marcos Maidana did. If he took the first offer and was content with that, it is still a career high payday for him. But whose fault is that? It's not Mayweather's fault. It's not Broder's fault. It's his team's fault. It's his fault. He should have negotiated something else. I'll give you another example. I was working at Sears at the time. And... You, we were getting, it was basically off commission. Like you get an hourly, but it was like $4 an hour and you had to bust your ass and like slang and you got commission for it. So my paychecks were cool, but I would every day, no matter if I had a bad day, hangover or whatever, I would still have to like grind, grind just to make sure my checks were looking right. And I was just, they, they had a bunch of changes, management changed and whatnot. And I wasn't feeling the place anymore. I wasn't feeling serious anymore. I was like, fuck it. I knew some friends that went over to Lowe's and, you know, I was like, you know what, let me apply. They called me back. I was still working at Sears, mind you. I still had the job at Sears, still getting paid. Um, Lowe's called me back, did the first interview. Then I did the second interview with the store manager. He says, we want to offer you a job doing this. And the amount that I requested on my job application when he said, oh, we're willing to give you this an hour for my hourly rate. It was less than what I had asked for on my job application and me knowing that I already had a job that I know, you know, what I mean, I'd been working at Sears for over two years or whatever, and I already knew the routine. I already knew my coworkers, so I could stick with that. You know, what I mean, it was, there was nothing like I was I had no write ups or anything to the point where they were forcing me out. I just wasn't feeling it personally, so I could stick to what I was getting for two years for the last two years stick to Sears or I could cross ship and I'm only getting 50 cents or a dollar more than what I was already getting. And then I was like, 
I can't accept that. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, I already have a job at Sears, and uh, I get close to that with my commission or whatever. And he gave me a second offer that I couldn't refuse. Put my two weeks in the Sears, then I started working for Lowe's. The rest was history. Now, had I, in the job interview, had I just been like, yes, I'll take it. And it was just a consistent amount. Didn't have to worry about commission. And it was only 50 cent more than what I was already getting. And I have to learn a whole new protocol, whole new set of managers. Don't know if I would like it over there at Lowe's. Um, probably doing more manual labor because they got like pallets and forklifts and shit. And I took that first offer. Then, of course, I was I was qualified for it. But I knew my worth. I knew I was qualified. I already had a job. So I already had stability. So I didn't give a fuck if I didn't get the job or if they were trying to lowball me or not trying to pay me what I wanted, then I'll stick to what I knew, which was Sears. But that second offer was chunky. So I was like, OK, making that hourly. Fuck it. I'll leave Sears, which he didn't know. But I wasn't really feeling anyway. I'd like with all the changes and the change in management and what they were asking of us at the time. So my Donna could have did the same thing. 1.5 mil if he was like nah i'm worth way more than that i'm a champion fuck that but my donna knows he's the b-side he knows that mayweather has other avenues he, he could fight a sean porter or keith thurman he could fight a kell brook possibly he could have went with amir khan like the mayweather poll suggested um there's other options so that's my donna's fault it's his team there's no harm in throwing a counter offer out there you know what i mean you don't you don't have to just like oh 1.5 mil it's floyd and take it so a lot of people were crying about this shit. There's nothing to cry about. He's still getting a, a nice paycheck, a career high. It's just not as much as it could have been. And then they, they want to bring up people like Timothy Brett, the guy I was talking to. He was like, Timothy Bradley got $6 million to fight Pacquiao. Good for Timothy Bradley. Maybe Timothy Bradley is more business-minded. He has history with Pacquiao. He won the first fight, although it was controversial. He still won it. He was still undefeated at the time. And he had just come off the Marquez win. So Timothy Bradley was in a position where he's like, fuck that. I'm not doing this fight for 800000 like I did the first fight or whatever he got for the first fight, knowing his worth. And another thing is, if you look at Timothy Bradley, Timothy Bradley was being represented by Cameron Duncan, fired him, cut out the middleman, said, hey, I'm going to keep this on the family. I'm going to have my wife, Monica, handle my finances. She's my new manager. Cut out the middleman, which is an unnecessary expense according to him on the HBO 24-7, and now his wife does it. So between him and his wife, a.k.a. his manager, they were able to work out a deal with $6 million. Same thing with Brandon Rios. The guy brought up Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios got $4 million to fight Pacquiao in Macau. Great for Brandon Rios. Maybe Brandon Rios realized his worth. He was coming off a loss, but it was still a respectable loss. He wasn't getting destroyed by Alvarado. He had Alvarado actually hurt and looking tattered to fuck up at the end of the fight. And... They were expecting him to go to Macau, China to fight. So you have to go overseas. He would be a fool to fight for peanuts if, if Brandon Rios chose to take that Pacquiao fight, um, which is always a dangerous fight. Pacquiao is a world-class elite fighter. He'd be an idiot to take that fight for, for $1 million and go overseas and, and, and get embarrassed like he got embarrassed, you know what I mean, for, for no type of money. So you could throw out all the examples in the world. I'm giving you solid examples. If my Donna felt he was worth more, hey, I destroyed Broner, I beat Ho Josito Lopez and battled adversity. I've been looking good. I beat Jesus Soto Carras. 1.5 ain't going to cut it. You gave Robert Guerrero $3 million to fight. Another fighter who got more money to fight Mayweather. Robert Guerrero had an interim belt, which is a lesser belt than the belt that than the strap that uh, Marcos Maidana has, yet he got more money. So again, it's a testament to Robert Guerrero and his team and what he's willing to deal with and what he's willing to settle for it has nothing to do with anything else. So some of you guys need to wake the fuck up, smell the coffee and understand this is business. There's nobody, like I said, with the MacBook example earlier, if I have a thousand dollar computer trying to sell it, someone offers me six fifty and I take it, then I'm a fool for taking it, knowing that if I wait it out, someone's going to offer me closer to what I was asking for the asking price. So once again, if Maidana wasn't content with the 1.5, if he's like, damn, little bro's getting 1.25, fuck that. I want more. Then he can do that, and he's entitled to do that. And if he gets passed up as a result, then, you know what I mean, he can use that as leverage. Be like, I was trying to make the fight. Mayweather was trying to lowball me. So now I got to fight Keith Thurman or Sean Porter or whoever else. 
because Mayweather don't want it with me. That's why he was trying to lowball me. It actually would have made him look look better and more feared. Like, hey, I'm a champion. We're at the negotiation table with Mayweather, Al Heyman, and LRB, and they were trying to lowball me. They were trying to give me what they're giving Adrian Broner to fight or whatever, or they're trying to give me half of what they give Guerrero, and I have a, a more significant belt. So it could have they could have spun it and made it look like Mayweather was ducking them. But if he's a fool enough to just like succumb and be like, oh, 1.5 mil, that's a career high, I'll take it, then of course, no one's going to offer you more. No one's going to be like, you know what, I feel bad for my Donna. He, he's, he's done a lot for the sport, and he upset Victor Ortiz. He gave Eric Morales a tough fight. I'm a, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a throw him $6 million when they can get it for $1.5. That, that makes no fucking sense. It, it just doesn't. There's no way you can justify it. It doesn't make any sense. If you can get someone for $1.5 it's like a, a fucking sports team, any sports team. 49ers, that's my team. If they can acquire a player for $1.5 million for a three-year deal, hypothetically, and the person's willing to take it, why are they going to offer him more? Why are they going to be like, no, you know what? you a dope player. I'm going to give you $10 million. I'm like, no. It's business. It's a simple business arithmetic. And some of you guys failed to receive it and failed to acknowledge that. I'm not saying this is the way of the world. It's the right way. But like I said in the first video, Omar Figueroa got more and had a shitty performance against Bill Montes. He got more money than Lucas Matisse and John Molina Jr. And they put on a historic like fight of the year candidate type of fight. Same thing with Miguel Cotto. And that's another thing. Some people act like this is just Floyd Mayweather. Floyd's doing it. Floyd. Miguel Cotto did the same thing. Sergio Martinez got treated like a bum. And he's the champion. Cotto's coming up to his division. Yet, Cotto had all these demands like, my name got to be first. I walk out second. You have to come out to Katy Perry music. You know what I mean? Cotto had all these ridiculous demands in order to make the fight with the champion. And that's what it is. That's what it is in boxing. It is a business. And again, I'm not saying I'm, I'm supporting what it's become. But if this is the way of the world now, you have to learn to navigate and how to deal with it and how to um, deal with the business aspect of boxing and get what you're worth. It's just like some people are afraid of technology. They're afraid of computers, afraid to use tablets. I mean, you have to just get out there and learn it. And if you don't learn the business, the business is going to learn you. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. If you don't learn the business, the business will learn you and you'll get exploited taken advantage of and end up like Mike Tyson. So you got to get hip to the business and make the right decision for your career. Maidana wanted the fight so desperately he's willing to do it for 1.5, not offer a counter offer and just accept it. So be it. That's what, I mean, that's what him and his team chose that was the best for his career. So I don't, I don't get all the emotions why people are so like, Oh, it's unfair. It's unjust. He Broner shouldn't be getting that much. But again, he's selling the fight. He branded himself. Therefore, it is what it is. Rigondeaux is getting no type of love and got less than Nonito Donaire and he outclassed Donaire and outclassed Ekbeko better than Abner Mades did and gets no love. So boxing is unfair. You know what I mean? How does Rigondeaux beat one of the top guys that was on ten, top 10 pound for pound list like Nonito Donaire and he gets no love. He gets no HBO dates. We don't know when he's fighting next. Nobody acts like they give a fuck about him other than like Cubans and diehard boxing fans that just respect the sport and the sweet science. So boxing is unfair. You know what I mean? This is this is nothing new. Let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.